we're really privileged to have you here today because it's you know been 12 months since we've been in amongst this global pandemic we usually have these incredible events where we have the opportunity to be together um so today i feel really privileged to be able to share some insights and a sneak peek into some of dyson's latest and greatest innovation in the environmental care category space so we'll unpack that a little bit further throughout this session um, but yeah please do sit back and enjoy we'll have an opportunity to ask some questions and experience the technology a little bit later on in the session um, but for now just sit back and enjoy i have a special guest joining us um, very shortly over the interwebs, um, but that special guest is James Shale and he is our engineer who worked on the EC category, but he's also responsible for managing some of our quality and sustainability initiatives um, here at Dyson. Uh, so without further ado, I guess um, I'll introduce myself as well. Um, my name is George and I'm a product expert here at Dyson. Um, so again, thank you so much for your time and we'll commence with the presentation. Uh, so I'm gonna, uh, I guess, rehash again who we are at Dyson and kind of what is our mission here because, you know, we, we historically we're known primarily, primarily as a vacuum cleaner company. But as you would know, attending multiple different events such as this with us, we are a global technology company and we're super passionate in line with our mission statement, which is to solve the problems that others ignore. And then we want to take it that step further and look at conventional products and flip them on their head and understand how can we re-engineer them to make them work better in real home situation or real workspaces and commercial environments. So um, yeah, I'll pass you over to James Shell and he's going to take you, take you through a bit of a history and how we've evolved throughout our categories and then we'll dive into the special event of today, which is the secret product reveal. <laughs> so over to you, James. Hi guys, uh, so my name is James. Uh, I'm a Dyson engineer. I've been an engineer at Dyson for the last five years. Um, I'm currently in Tokyo, um, researching you know, how we would make better products for specifically Japanese users, and making sure that the quality of our products in uh, Asia or uh, in TikTok condition. Um, so that's a little bit about myself and uh, what I do with Dyson. Um, and now let me talk to you a little bit about the uh, history of Dyson. Um, so the experience of our owners is central to everything that we do here at Dyson. Um, really Dyson came about um, out of a frustration from an owner. So James Dyson bought a top of the line uh, bag vacuum cleaner and got very frustrated at how quickly it dropped and how quickly the performance dropped. Um, so he set out inventing the world's first cyclonic uh, vacuum cleaner. Um, so we use cyclones to separate the, uh, the mess from the air, um, and this means that we don't lose suction over time. Um, we remain obsessed with problem solving and making things better. So we're, we're frustrated on this too. We don't like things that are too heavy, too inefficient, or too polluting. So we, we try and relentlessly improve, even if it means ourselves. So after 20 years after making the kind of first patent cyclone, um, we've spent a lot of time and effort making lightweight um, battery packs um, and super lightweight motors so we can kind of make the coolest revolution happen. Um, our focus is on developing better technology and machines which can support healthier, cleaner homes and spaces, improving the well-being and health of our owners. So Dyson spent 10 years developing uh, techniques of aerodynamics and motor development, and we decided to integrate it into a hand dryer, creating the Dyson Air Blade. This revolutionised the way that people dry their hands in bathrooms all over the world. So in 2016 in Australia, and 2019 in New Zealand, we took a bold jump into the beauty category. Um, now we have a lot of understanding of the fundamental science and technologies that go into these types of products. Um, but to, to really launch successfully in this industry, we also had to do a lot of testing on real human hair, um, and we set up hair science labs all over the planet. So our first innovation was the Dyson Super Sonic. Uh, we created a super lightweight motor, the Dyson V9, which enables it to be mounted in a handle, making the product lightweight and well balanced. Um, but another important feature is the intelligent heat control, so it constantly measures the temperature to ensure um, less heat damage when drying hair. Our next innovation in this 
sector was the Dyson error. Um, so the Dyson error uses the Coimbra effect um, to wrap air around a series of attachments that we've designed in conjunction with the product. Um, and it's a wet to dry styler. Um, so again, it removes the need for excessive heat when it's styling hair. And our latest innovation is the Dyson Corral. So the Dyson Corral is a cordless uh, battery powered straightener um, with flexible manganese plates um, which uh, trap the hair to uh, give a better strength. Having started in a coach house near Bath in the UK, uh, Dyson has consistently grown since it was established in 1993. Uh, we now have over 14,000 people globally, including 6,000 engineers and scientists. We are developing new technologies for global teams focused on solid-state battery cells, high-speed electric motors, vision systems, robotics, machine learning technologies, and even AI investment. Uh, we currently have 10,551 patents pending globally. So we're really passionate about engineering and technology but we believe our owners are too. Um, so the Dyson website gives our owners a fantastic chance to really understand the technology within our machine and the differences between our different products and our different SKUs. So people can kind of look at the technology and, and pick the right product for the real world problems that they're having, um, all without the compulsion to or pressure to buy. So we believe in coming directly to the people who made the technology to get the best experience. By going direct, uh, you get the exact information you need rather than the kind of endless shell stack with various paint. Um, and you get our best price quality. There's also limited edition colorways. But most importantly is uh, Dyson's relationship with you after the product purchase. Um, so we want our machines to pop up. Um, and so we offer a two-year warranty, which covers all parts and labor. And when you buy from Dyson Direct, we automatically register your product, so you get the full benefit of that two-year warranty, um, as well as some uh, same-day ship delivery. Um, so Dyson, as I said, wants to go far beyond uh, the relationship just at the point of purchase. Uh, so we've kind of been pioneering some uh, new programs, which includes kind of contacting our users with tips and tricks about how to use the machine and, and, and keep it operational for as long as possible. Um, but also some handy notifications like when you might want to replace your filter on one of your PC machines. Um, so talking of PC, uh, let me now talk to you a little bit about the development of that category within Dyson. So at Dyson, we're pretty obsessed with airflow. Uh, we've spent 25 years investigating different and better ways to manipulate air. In 2009, we launched our first environmental care machine, uh, AM01. Um, and in 2016, we launched our first purifier here in Australia. So unlike conventional fans, Dyson machines removed weights so that it didn't buffet like the competitive products. With air multiplier technology, we could begin to tackle the dust in air as well as the carpet, with the technology helping to project and mix purified air all around the room. Alongside our understanding of airflow, filtration is going to be core of Dyson's machine development. So that takes you through, I guess, some of the key developments that we've made through each category, which is very exciting for us here at Dyson and some of the breakthroughs that we've made. But to bring it back to the space that we're here to talk to today, which is, of course, air treatment and specifically within Dyson environmental care. Um, it, we need to shine a, a focus back onto, I guess, awareness in terms of outdoor air quality. Now, you know, historically in Australia, of course, we have beautiful blue skies and beautiful blue oceans, and the awareness of air quality and air treatment was relatively low until we had the bushfires in late 2019 and 2020, which actually took a problem that we consider invisible and made it quite visible. And it also made people a lot more aware about the potential health effects that can be contributed to poor air quality. So with that said, you know, what happened to us all again in 2020? We all experienced a global pandemic, of course, with COVID-19. So awareness increased even higher for the importance of air treatment with inside our homes, but also we am out in our workspaces as well. So with that said, you know, we not only want to create technology that help clean the air, but what we did in terms of 
giving back to the community in Australia who were particularly affected or those that were um, highly affected by these bushfires last year. We actually donated over $600,000 worth of environmental care products and floor care products to those people affected to help really clean their, their environment and make it healthier because the outdoor air quality wasn't enabling them to contribute to that. So it's important that our engineers do all these research to understand how outdoor pollutants and the effects that they have, but then we need to bring it back to an area that we can actually control, which is indoors. And that's what our technology does. Our purifiers capture particulate matter using our HEPA filters and gases using our carbon filters 99% of those pollutants are captured down to 0.1 microns. So for context, that is the strand of a human hair. Um, and that's how small the particles are that we're capturing. So again, we need to uh, oh, <laughs> jump the gun there. But in addition to that, what our engineers have done is gone above and beyond to create an air quality backpack, which this video is going to highlight to you on how they did that. But we've done local studies around each market in 17 countries in particular, and Sydney was one of those focus for our engineers to really understand the effects of air quality on the journey, on our day-to-day -day route in the journey. And this follows one of our influences. So please check this out. In 2019 and 2020, ourselves in is developing a backpack that has air quality sensors to really help at the end of the day us design machines to effectively remove these pollutants from inside the home and inside workspaces but it's also just taking it that next level to try and make the invisible visible that's the challenge here right if it's invisible we're not aware of it but if we can create technology that makes the consumer consumer aware of the effects of these pollutants and how it captures it that's really the goal here so again, in saying that, you know, because of all these, uh, because of the pandemic, you know, and the new normal, let's say, people, we're much more conscious of the exposure that, we're much more conscious of the air quality we expose ourselves to, whether that's on our journey, on the way to work, um, within work, in our personal spaces, we're using masks and social distancing, distancing um, and obviously additional purifiers to help clean that air environment. But again, it's not, just about the outdoor air quality that we need to tackle. It's really about what's happening indoors. So in fact, um, you know, if we all were to take a deep breath in right now, can I just have a, take a breath in with me? We take over 10,000 liters of air in a day as human beings. And with every breath, we breathe in between 50 or five to 50 million pollutants. So that's a lot of 
air that we're breathing and a lot of pollutants we're taking in with every breath. So in this new normal, you know, we're spending much more time indoors. We're actually spending nearly 90% of our time indoors. And this is actually a statistic that we um, calculated pre-COVID. So, you know, we know now in the last 12 months, 100% of people's time is actually being spent indoors in certain parts of the world. So it's even more prevalent that we look at how do we treat those indoor environments. A local statistic here as well in Australia, we actually have one in nine Australians actually suffer from asthma, okay? And that's a really huge statistic. Is that, does anyone in the room uh, suffer from asthma from us or any asthma and allergies? Yeah, from time to time, yeah. So it, again, it's more important that the air that we're breathing is, is treated. Um, so in saying that, that's, that equates like 2.7 million Aussies suffer from asthma. And that's quite a few people, of course. Um, so if we move that back into the indoor context, back to indoor air, the air inside our homes can be up to five times more polluted than the air outdoors. So we know what types of pollutants are out there, but they get into our internal environments. The more sealed our businesses are, our workspaces, our homes, the more of that pollution we're trapping in. And a lot of those pollutants can actually be found anywhere throughout the home from our bedrooms. So for context, you know, when we're taking the doona off us in the morning and we see those dust mites and allergens, they become airborne as we move. A lot of them are invisible, but they can stay airborne for up to 30 minutes, right? It's also the personal care products that we're using um, as part of our morning routine that can be releasing compounds into the room. And, you know, it's just those general dust, bacteria, pollen that's coming in from the outdoor air. There are many different places in the home and inside that pollution sources can be found. And if we put that under a microscope, because the problem is a lot of that is actually invisible. So the way that we're kind of breaking down these pollutants is within this scale here that you see. So Jess, our engineer mentioned it in the video, PM, particle matter, Two point, uh, PM10 is actually microscopic particles within 10 microns of size, which essentially to correlate that, it's kind of those larger dust spores that you can see. Um, and this is the pollen in the air and um, <clears throat> mold in the air. Then you move to microscopic particles like PM2.5 and that's things like smoke and things that can be small enough to even potentially get into our bloodstreams. Then we have VOC and this acronym is actually Volatile Organic Compounds. And this is actually a broad term for a lot of compounds and chemicals that can be found in a lot of cleaning products, soap products, personal care products. There are a lot of, uh, there's a, a, a pollutant called formaldehyde, which we'll unpack in another slide. But this um, chemical itself actually merges with other molecules and other particles, but it lives in a lot of um, surfaces and furnishings and items that we use within our businesses and in our home that can actually have an adverse effect for years to come. And then the last thing that we report on here, of course, is NO2, and that comes like exhaust emissions or um, uh, fumes coming from gas cooktops and kitchen environments and so on. So what we'll do is bring up this slide because I found this really quite interesting that in the last 12 months, that 47 or oh, spend on renovations and DIY activities in the last 12 months has actually increased by 47%. So may I ask, would you raise your hand if you've done any kind of DIY or renovation activity in the last 12 months? Yes, okay, great. Whether that, that's, a, like, that's across like putting a flat pack together to like <laughs> renovating the whole house. Um, and I know I've definitely done a bit of that as well. And what was really confronting for me to find out was that in other countries, when they actually do renovations to their businesses or to their homes and it's fresh painting and putting new flooring and new furniture, they actually vacate the premises for a week, a minimum or weeks actually, to help remove as much as that, those pollutants as possible before they move into that space. And that's because the awareness is much higher in those other countries in terms of visible air pollution. So again, the point of that is to highlight that there are so many different things in our room that can contribute to that poor air quality, but specifically formaldehyde. It is an odorless gas, and this gas, um, and, and, and this chemical, in fact, according to US studies, is actually one of the top 10 most harmful chemicals, um, and a list of top 10 harmful chemicals in terms of um, air pollutants, uh, in terms of pollution. And this can be found in 
wooden flooring or actually the glues and the resins and the materials that are used to create um, the furniture that we have in our homes or in our shops, in our salons, um, in our businesses. Also within painting, um, the furnishings in our mattresses, our rugs, you know, I'll share a story with you later in our breakout session about, you know, a personal experience I've had with this, but, you know, I have no doubt everyone in this room has had exposure to formaldehyde one way or another from the workspace or from in our places. Um, so again, uh, the other thing just to mention, of course, is the next slide, because what I want to put into context, I talked about we're capturing down to 0.1 microns, right? And this is down to really the strand of a head of hair, a uh, single hair. Formaldehyde is 500 times smaller than 0.1 microns, okay? So a lot of the time it can escape through conventional purification systems and filters and be released back into the environment in the air. But what we found is high exposure to formaldehyde actually has adverse effects in terms of causing itchy noses, itchy eyes, respiratory systems, rhinitis, um, and large volumes of exposure to formaldehyde can have even more adverse effects. So our engineers wanted to come up with a solution to be able to not only capture it, but completely destroy this technology. So we'll take you through that in just a moment. But it's even more important, of course, in our workspaces. So, you know, we're fortunate enough to be here together today, but I assure you, we have multiple purifiers around the room to help encourage that space. But the point is, we, our engineers aren't just looking at what they can do in a home environment. We want to know what we can do in those commercial spaces because there are a lot more guidelines around ventilations. And a lot of these workspaces often, if you look up, have you know, a HVAC system or those inducted systems. And a lot of them claim to have filters that capture pollutants. But in reality, those filters are there to help filter out pollution or particles from actually causing damage to the system itself rather than focusing on the quality of the air that's coming out. So often these spaces just recirculating maybe conditioned air, but it's not often purified air and the pollutants um, are amplifying and creating a massive cocktail in this environment. So we want to really raise awareness, not only internal in our homes, but in our workspaces, but then create technology that empowers business owners, users of communal spaces, and people using the product in their home to take control of the air quality in their environment. So I'm gonna hand you over to James now, who's actually gonna do a bit of a reveal. And Alex, I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna pull that cloth off in a minute. So just for your shots. <laughs> cool. Um, so over to you, James. Thank you, George. And thank you for talking us through a few of the real world problems. Um, it gives me great pleasure to give you a sneak peek into our latest pioneering technology. Um, we hope that this solution people can have peace of mind in professional environments. Um, so without further ado, George, can I ask you to remove the top and the reveal the photos? Okay, here it is, oh. Dyson. So this is the uh, new Dyson TK9. Um, it captures ultra-fine dust and allergens, uh, removes 99.95% of particles, as small as 0.5 microns, and even destroys formaldehyde continuously. Um, so we've got some new painting technology inside, um, including a solid state formaldehyde sensing technology, um, and this enables us to detect and destroy uh, formaldehyde. The entire machine is sealed to a HEPA-H13 standard, and this, um, this sealing is what enables us to remove 99.95% of the particles as small as 0.1 uh, microns. Um, importantly, for the kind of professional environment, the TPO9 is actually 20% quieter than its predecessor, uh, so we've got a lot of engineering effort into making the product even quieter. Um, so it's our first purifier machine specifically developed for like, the workspace, schools, gyms, hotels, um, all those kind of professional environments. Um, so a couple of additional things that we've done to cater for the professional environment is that we've made the paint 50% longer, so the machine is a little bit more mobile. Um, we've also included an additional remote, because we're conscious um, when it's not in the home, uh, one of the remotes might get lost. Um, we offer a one year extended warranty uh, to give people that peace of mind when purchasing multiple machines. Um, so really, I think the product breaks down 
and the technologies and the product break down into three key areas. We've got sensing, uh, capture, and projection. So I'm going to talk you through a few of the different technological advancements um, that have accelerated these areas. So the first area I'd like to talk to you about today is sensing. Um, before we can remove the particles from the air, first we need to know um, what the air quality is like in the house. Um, so the Dyson machine has a series of sensors. It has a particulate sensor, which is great for detecting PM2.5 um, and PM10. It has gaseous sensors uh, that are used to detect uh, things like NO2 and VOCs. Um, and Dyson has developed a unique algorithm uh, for dust concentration readings. Now this has been verified by experts in London and Beijing to correlate with sophisticated or air quality measurement stations used to report gravity levels. Um, but Dyson's new purifier also has a solid state formaldehyde sensor. Um, so this also uses an intelligent algorithm so that it doesn't force trigger formaldehyde readings. Uh, when it's picking up other gases, like VOCs. Now, this new sensor can last a lifetime. Um, so, other tech, other companies use what's called a, a gel-based formaldehyde sensor. We've added something called a solid-state formaldehyde sensor, which means the gel doesn't dry out. Um, we see that when the gel dries out on uh, gel-based sensors, you can get very inaccurate readings. So, um, the purifier. It is capable of reporting on the screen the formaldehyde levels and your air quality levels, as well, along with like the temperature and the humidity. Um, but we'll have the Dyson Link app. Um, now, if you connect your product with the Dyson Link app, you can control it remotely um, and you can also view the kind of historic air pollution data um, in your home over time as well, which is, is, is an interesting read. Um, so now I'm going to show you a little video about our testing that in relation to the malphite. There are hundreds of different chemicals in indoor air, but one of the ones we want to do something about, in particular, is malphite. It's made up of some really simple molecules that we've all heard of, but when combined together, it's actually quite a harmful pollutant. This face represents a standard bedroom. We've got a double bed in the middle here, a couple of side tables, and we've stood up some lovely uh, wooden flooring, and all of these things are missing from the market. Indoor air quality is an incredibly complex problem to understand. Over 30 years, we've been relentlessly pursuing our understanding of that, and it continues to grow every single day. So, other sensors, such as this one here, are gel-based. What that means is the minute they're manufactured, they start to dry out. And over time, the numbers they start feeding back to become inaccurate. This orange here absolutely does not have any flower in it whatsoever, but this sensor will tell you that it does. Our sensor uses a solid state system that's continuously monitoring what's happening in the air environment. But it's not enough to know what just happened, we need to do something about it. Inside this, we have the material that's been coated with a catalytic substance. It's based on the material that cooks may know, and so at an atomic level, as these really tiny tunnels, which are perfectly shaped in size, to allow the development to pass through. As it's passing through, manganese in the filter breaks down that flow of light into the carbon dioxide and water, which is pumped. So our formaldehyde filter doesn't just capture the carbon dioxide, it actually destroys it, which is much more important. It's really an incredible piece of technology. So, how are you feeling about it so far? Interesting? Yeah, amazing. Exactly. So I guess um, the next piece to really touch on is I'm going to send you back to James a couple more times throughout the presentation, two more times specifically, but then we're going to go and experience and put this all to practice and actually get hands on so you can really get that tactile feel for it. But the second key piece of technology that's really important that James is going to touch on and we have just briefly touched on is the whole capturing element. And what are these filters all about and what do they do and how effective are they? So I'll hand you back over to James to talk you through the second key piece of tech, which is all about capturing technology. I shall come, George. So <laughs> you talked earlier about sensing, which is the first area. Um, but once you've detected the uh, particles, the next uh, objective is to capture them. Um, so different pollutants in the air require different filtration technologies to remove them. Um, so. We have the HEPA filter, which is on the most outside 
of, of the product. So this um, contains heated pepper material. And this is really effective at capturing your particular matter. Um, so your PM10, your PM2.5, all the way down to kind of 0 0.1 microns. Um, next we have the carbon filters. So they have uh, granulated carbon in. Um, and these are really effective at uh, saturating the VOC and NO2 gases, which are particularly nasty um, gaseous um, uh, elements that are found within homes. Um, and lastly is a really our new innovation, which is our selective catalytic oxidization filter. Um, so that's on the innermost of the product. Now, formaldehyde is 500 times smaller than 0.1 microns, so it's particularly difficult to capture. Um, and also, it's one of the most harmful if, if you suffer from prolonged exposure to it. So, basically, the catalytic, uh, the catalytic filter that we've created has tiny, tiny holes that can specifically fit formaldehyde at a tip. And then we use a catalytic process, much like the catalytic converter of the exhaust of your car, um, to break down the formaldehyde particle into tiny amounts of water vapor and CO2. Um, and one of the, the most interesting parts of uh, this process is the oxygen actually uh, regenerates uh, the catalytic surface, um, meaning that you never have to replace this filter. Um, so in addition to our three filters that we have, um, I mentioned earlier that we um, really concentrated on sealing the machine so that it could form to a HEPA H13 standard. And you can only really do this by uh, making sure that the sealing in between the filters and the different areas of the product um, is done really well. So HEPA 13 is really kind of standard filtration and is the kind of holy grail of purification. And, and this machine adheres to that. Um, so that's become particularly uh, important um, you know, following the kind of COVID-19 pandemic, um, people are a lot more interested in you know, really effective filtration um, and the Dyson product can really help where um, perhaps we haven't got the best HVAC systems built into the, the building um, or, or the environment that we're living or operating in. Um, so that's uh, a little bit about how we capture the pollutants in this new chain. Excellent, thank you. So what I'll do, I'm actually going to move over to the machine just to give you a little visual representation about how the filters sit in the product, take a look at those seals, but I also have a smoke box demonstration which really highlights how effective the machine's filters actually are at capturing and making sure nothing comes back into the room environment. So with Dyson machines, if this was something you were to have in your workspace or your environment or in your home, it's super easy to change the filters. There are actually two buttons on either side of the toggle here. They press down and two cassettes come out of the machine. This is your catalytic filter as you saw in the image, but this actually stays as for the lifetime of the machine, never needs to get changed. Um, but then again, with each particular filter cassette, what we've done that's different to our previous generation of purifiers is we've now combined our HEPA layer and our carbon layer into one half. So before we would have a HEPA layer, then a separate carbon layer, and they would sit as four sets in here. Now it's combined into one. This filter is now made out of a 25% recycled material, which is great in terms of lean engineering and that sustainability aspect. But what the end consumer is really gonna benefit from is one combi filter that they're gonna need to change that has two elements. And then the thing with this filter is if the machine is used for 12 hours a day, it would be replaced once a year. If the machine's used for 24 hours a day, of course, you'd look at replacing these every six months. And of course, it just depends on your environment that you're in. So if you are in that salon space or that professional kind of space, there are all these you know, odors and things that can actually be captured within the carbon layer as well. So any, any kind of formaldehyde that might be in hairsprays or personal care products or any of those cleaning agents are now being destroyed in this process, which is great. Now, it doesn't matter, there's no front and back. We've tried to make it easy, regardless of what side you connect it to, it's gonna lock into place. We wanna make it nice and easy. Um, so as that was quick and easy to pop in, I'd like to push your attention now to 
this smoke box demonstration because this orange dust is something that is really, really hard for purifiers to be able to capture without leaking back into the room. And you'll see that we'll fill this smoke box completely up with smoke and I'd ask you to cast your attention to the top of the loop in the video because you'll notice that there is no orange dust flying out or coating any of the white surfaces here. And then within about a minute or so, this machine is going to effectively remove and capture all of that fine orange sawdust into its filters without emitting it back into the room. Now, if you can equate that to like smoke and the smallest of PM 2.5 particles, this is kind of <laughs> that, like the pressure test for a purifier. If it can clear out this orange dust and keep it completely clear, you know that it's cleaning the air in your environment or your workspace that you're in, which is super important. So I'll let that play through before we move on to the next key piece. But there's some fundamental differences compared to our previous generation. So you can see the box is clearing up. It will then give it another 10 seconds or so and that will completely clear up. And then what we'll do is, oh yes. I was gonna say, you can see from the people walking in the background that it's not a time lapse, it's real uh, time. No, this is absolutely, look, we had the option to either time lapse it or not. And we mm. thought, hey, you we're gonna show you exactly in real time exactly how quick it's going to clear that box so that was a really great observation <laughs> awesome well thank you so much look we'll leave it there i can assure you that box will go crystal clear but what we'll do in the interest of time because i want you to get hands on um i'll send you back over to james because there's one other key thing we did to these purifiers which was we've made them whole machine sealed compared to our previous generation so we're talking about the effectiveness of the filters but james is now going to tell you how they achieved creating this machine to be completely sealed. So, thank you, George. I really love that demonstration uh, because it shows just how effective the machine is uh, at capturing all of the particles and, and not leaking them um, through different assemblies. Um, so, how did we achieve this? Um, well, the nice thing to is really took a forensic approach to ensuring that the whole machine is sealed. Um, so, we identified uh, 24 critical points in the machine. Uh, between the various assemblies, so it might be between the different filters or between the filters and the motor, um, and really ensured uh, high precision of sealing in those 24 areas. Um, so this gives us a seal filtration system, which means our purifier meets the HEPA H13 standard. Which is incredible. So guys, the last key piece I think that we want to take you through is in terms of projection. So we've talked about how we've sealed, how we've captured, the really most important part of purifier, right, which is capturing the pollutants. The next key piece is all about projection. So one last piece from James to talk to you about projection and some testing, and then we'll move on to experience the technology. So over to you, James. Um, so the final area I'm gonna talk through, after we've detected pollutants and, uh, and we've removed them, um, it's important to talk about how we project this purified stream of air. Um, so our third area of focus for today is projection. So uh, you may have heard me say uh, before in this presentation that Dyson were absolutely obsessed with air flow and spent 25 years really kind of understanding it, working out how to manipulate air. Um, so the first innovation that really uh, is featured on this work is the Dyson air multiplier technology. So essentially this works like a hydrofoil on an airplane wing. Um, and this enables us to kind of take that purified air um, and intensify the speed at which it's projected out of the amp of the product. Um, we've also integrated 350 degree oscillation, so you can really kind of target all of the air and mix that purified air into your environment. Um, so to further kind of uh, generate this, this stream of air and air mixing with the room, uh, we've created 10 different fan speeds um, that kind of adapt to you in your life. 10 is obviously the most powerful, whether the motor spins the fastest and you'll project the largest volume of purified air around the room. But there's also lower uh, fan speed settings if you want a kind of quieter performance or you have an environment that you're not so worried about the air quality within. Um, additionally, what we've done is we've created a diffuser mode. Um, so when the diffuser mode gets in, the airflow is diverted through the back of the amp. So you don't get a kind of strong airflow. Now this is going to be perfect when you want to purify your room, but you don't want a strong stream of air um, blowing at you while you're in the room. 
Um, so proper ventilation involves exchanging indoor and outdoor air. But using the kind of technologies that I've just mentioned, um, what the Dyson does is kind of moves air around the roof and, and injects the clean purified air, which kind of stops the air from coming stale. Um, so where outdoor air is polluted, um, or if HVAC systems are used in spaces, uh, the Dyson uh, purifier can also work in conjunction with this. So it's going to uh, work in conjunction with any air filtration system you have in the environment as well, um, because of this project technology that I just talked you through. Um, so that is projection. Um, hopefully that gives you a nice understanding into our new pioneering technology. Um, and I'm going to arrange. Cool. So I'll do. I'm just actually going to give you a little active demonstration of what some of those features were. Um, so a lot of you will be familiar, obviously, with using a, 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 a fan product where you have ability to manually adjust the fan speed. So using the remote control, which is, of course, magnet at the top of the product, you can manually adjust the fan speed all the way up to fan speed 10. So again, you're getting that really powerful airflow but what you might not notice is, how does the machine sound acoustically to you? Quiet. So quiet. So as at the beginning, James went to it's 20% quieter. So it's incredible for those workspaces if you don't want to be disrupted doing a consultation with a client or distracting someone uh, or, or having a, you know, something that could be distracting in the background. I know I'm pretty sensitive to those things. Which, which um level is this? Is this 10? This is fan speed 10. So yeah. This is the highest fan speed at the moment. Because the original Dyson, the very, very first yes. uh, air multiplier was loud. Yeah. But this is uh, it's multi multi generations later. Uh, so. it's, it's, it, I'm so glad you brought that point up because, you know, I can imagine 20% quieter of our previous generation. That was already substantially quieter in the first generation. Mm -hmm. So we're just going from strength to strength. But the main benefit, of course, is, you know, you're not having that. So here's forward projection. Then this is what James meant about diffuse mode. So if we push the diffuse mode, a valve switches at the back, the airflow will stop from the front of the product. So if you're in your environment and your client or in your environment, you don't want that cooling draft of airflow, it's now diffused. So you're getting 100% of the effective purification, but look how slow the pin will spin. So it's not creating that cool draft um, as it does from the big front of the product. So that's an incredible feature. And then of course, with your oscillation, you can go between 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and 350 degrees. So when you have the fan speed running, it's mixing and circulating in every corner of the room that the machine's in, which is incredible. Awesome. Okay, and before we go over to experience the product, one last key pillar that really sets Dyson apart from the pack to other competitors out there is our testing methodology and our standards and principles. So James is just gonna take you through that last bit and then we'll get up and get hands on. Tough. Thanks again, George. Um, so yeah, uh, we've just seen some active demos from George. Um, I wanted to talk you through you know, how we test this um, in our engineering house. Um, so the video play now shows the industry standard test. Um, it's conducted in small chambers with a ceiling fan and only one sensor. So this is called the CADR test. Um, but in our opinion, it's not representative of like a real life space where a purifier may exist. So Dyson actually goes beyond the industry tests. Um, and in the video that you're watching now, you will see a uh, kind of uh, virtual interaction of some polar test. Now this is based on a much larger, more representative room size of 27 meters square, and it has no added ceiling fan. So eight sensors are placed in the corners of the room, um, and um, one sensor in the middle of the room. Um, and we've used this method to engineer the Dyson Pure Formaldehyde machine, um, as we believe it's really important to deliver a uniform cleaning performance throughout the whole room. Cool. So guys, I guess to end the session, we'll just recap some of the key technology as part of the session, but just keep in mind, this again is an exclusive solution, particularly for professional commercial workspaces. So it's the exclusive, it's not gonna be available for our consumers, it has that 50% longer cable, the two remote controls, 
but from a core functionality perspective, it has a brand new sensor that detects formaldehyde in addition to the other pollutants. It now has a new combination filter that's made out of 25% recyclable material, but also with that catalytic filter that is a lifetime filter that destroys formaldehyde. And then we also have the acoustic improvements, of course. So the machine is 20% quieter than its previous generation. And it also now boasts a whole machine sealed system. So in a world where air treatment is more prevalent than ever and more important, we are really want to drive that with our differentiating points and really only a Dyson works like a Dyson. So please keep in mind, this product is actually going to be available in May. Um, so very early on, I'll be sharing this with you, which is exciting. Um, but please keep in mind to check out our newsroom um, on the Dyson website as well for more information. But follow me through to the next space. So the doors are gonna open up through. And we've just set up a couple of room settings to really give you context of the machine situation. And then we'll play around with some of the settings. Thank you so much. So as you come through, follow me to the left. And if you wanna just form over here, there are a couple of machines I just want to talk to you about here as well. So in terms of how this machine reacts, a really great way to show you how calibrated these sensors are is we have on the remote control an information screen, right? Now this has 10 LCD screens. You can click through a real-time graph, a 24-hour graph. You can actually see the levels of the pollutants broken down in those particles if you wish. And there's also temperature, humidity, and filter life status. But for this demonstration, I want to put it into the real-time screen because I'm going to show you how this machine reacts in its auto mode. So you don't need to have it in a manual fan spin. You literally can just have it in its auto mode and the machine will work with literally one wave of a pollution event. Keep your eye on that screen and look how it spikes instantly right up to that. Then what it's going to do is you'll hear the fan speed raise because now what it's saying is, hey, I've detected a pollution event. I need to draw in as much of that pollution event as possible to capture it. So it might be hairspray going off in the corner. It could be the dust particles particles, pollen, um, cleaning agents, and then it's removing it as quick as it possibly can to bring the air quality level back down to a safe zone. That's why we love this machine, because it's intelligent. It uses 40 watts of power in the fans being 10, which is correlating to a conventional light bulb being run, and that's in fan speed 10, its highest mode. So if it's in auto, it's gonna auto-regulate itself based on the pollution event automatically, taking the hard work out for the user and the owner. Um, in addition to that, you have it connected to the app. So this is something I'd love you to engage with because in my opinion, it is one of the most underplayed features when it comes to our products because in the app, <laughs> the home screen, um, what's incredible about the Dyson Link app, it's actually a free download from the Google Play Store, the Apple Store. And as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection at home, this machine, you'll need to have your Wi-Fi password handy. You can link this up by downloading the Dyson Link app. You create a free Dyson account with a free download, link your machine up, but then now you can completely control multiple machines that are connected to your device if you like. So which one was this? This is Hallway, I believe, that we named it. You can rename them to whatever you want or whatever space. But I'm gonna turn this on and off and you can see the machine instantly reacts to the response on the on the. It's like app. another remote control. It's like another remote control, but it goes one step. But wait, there's more. Um, in saying that, you actually get complete control of what the outdoor air quality is in the environment, also within the space of where that purifier is in. So then you can use it as a complete remote control, which is fantastic. However, what people are really interested in to know is if you slide up, you can actually get detailed reports based on the pollution events in the home. So I'll try and hold this as steady as possible, but essentially you can break it down by the type of pollutant and how much of that is in your space. And you can also break it down daily, weekly, and monthly. So if you want to be in control and know what air pollution events are happening throughout your space, this is an incredible way to be able to track that and understand that as well. And of course, you can completely schedule the machine, order filters, and completely customize it to your home or workspace environment directly from here. And then also have your multiple machines. So if you 
leave the office for the day and forget to turn the machine off, you can do that here and vice versa. If you hop into bed before turning it off and grabbing the remote, you can turn it off from your device, which is awesome. So I'll leave that here for you guys to engage with as well. But just to my left here, to your right, these are not available in the commercial spaces, but these are our consumer range. So this essentially is the consumer version of this product, but with a heating element in it. Now we know in the workspaces, a lot of those spaces do have systems that help regulate temperature. So we def probably don't need a, a heating solution where we would use this with the longer cord and capturing formaldehyde to really help circulate and complement what's already in there. Whereas we have another consumer towel version that's a non-formaldehyde skin. Cool, so these are just our consumer versions for you to have a look at as well. So is this one on the end here, this, this one here, is that yeah. just a newer version then of the existing one? Yes, so but what the difference is with this, it's now 20% quieter than the previous generation and it has combination filters. Yes, and, and because it doesn't do formaldehyde, it's uh, cheaper than that particular one there. Absolutely, yeah, you're yeah. correct. So it's the next yeah. generation of the current model with all those quieter. It is, most quieter definitely, with 20% yeah. quieter, a whole machine filtration and combination filters. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. And then in the commercial version, take that and add capturing formaldehyde, a longer cord, and an extra remote control. Yeah. Yeah. And if people want, consumers want formaldehyde, there it is. Yes, exactly, yeah. spot on. Or don't want formaldehyde. Messy, <laughs> you, you got me. Um, and then we'll move over to the side here. Just so you guys get hands on. We've just cut out some of the filters. We love, you know, Tom loves sending things off to the engineers to get laser cut, um, and so we can see inside them for you guys. But um, essentially, this is just the internals of the machine, just to really show you our engineering elements. But specifically, if you did want to get hands on when you're roaming around, this is our catalytic filter. Again, you can kind of see some of the internal components that put the oxygen back into that catalytic holes and it regenerates it to last for that um, lifetime of the machine. And then again, our combination filter. So this again is what is capturing all the particle matter and the dust and the pollutants and bacteria. And this is the one capturing all the compounds that are coming from hairsprays and products and cleanings and chemicals and odors as well are being captured in this stage. Excellent. Um, and then last but not least, this is just an animation of what James took us through with all those lovely critical points that allow the engineers to be able to seal this off so we can really set Dyson apart from the pack and know that difference with Dyson is that not only our machines do they sense pollution but we make the invisible visible by telling you exactly on the screen what pollutant it is and how much of it's in the room. We capture it through our multiple stages of filtration that are completely sealed to the machine and then we also project using our unique technology to mix and circulate that air across the whole room. And that's the core things on top of all the amazing little nuances as well of the product. So may I ask, do you have any questions before get hands on and make a mess of our rooms for us? <laughs> In the movie Spaceballs, um, there was a, a, the, one of the bad guys was this giant vacuum cleaner lady that was trying to suck the atmosphere off planet Earth. And it just made me think that, you know, how many decades will it be before Dyson has a whole Earth planetary filter that can solve the problems of pollution and uh, global warming and all the rest by, by how having... How am I going to answer that? <laughs> Dyson are always working on new innovations and technology. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, <laughs> that's a really charming way to put it. I think if, if we could do it, we would. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Tom would testify to this, there's probably a lot of initiatives happening behind the scene on how our technology can continue to solve the problems and, you know, make the world a cleaner and healthier place. Yeah, Elson, yes. Has anyone question? got a real question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> so what size room can one of these purify? It's a fantastic question. So the machines are actually tested to a standard of 27 meters squared or 83 cubic meters, right, which is the standard of an average bedroom. But what we're able to uniquely position our machines to is that we are able to purify nearly any size room it just will, we, we're more about the quality of a clean rather than how quick we can clean the room. So a lot of others out there that talk about how quick they clean a room, but do they clean that room effectively? We don't know, because we hold our machines to a much different standard. So we'd much rather, so to answer your question, yes, it will purify a larger room, right? We have the stat of 83 cubic meters to share, but the machine will clean a larger room. It will just take longer to do so. 
But then also it's low cost to leave it on all the time if Most you want to. Most definitely. So you would just leave it on all the time. And it definitely. And again, that comes down to the end user as well. But like I said, it's 40 watts in its highest fan speed. If it's in auto, it's always regulating and it's always just on when it needs to purify. But yes, it will, uh, 290 liters of air come out a second. Um, and if we need, if you have any specific questions post this session in terms of any particular room size or example, share that with us and we can get you a, a concrete answer. Cool. It um, is always cool to see the Dyson automatically come on when there's, you know, some cooking smells or something, it just comes on automatically. This that, is the story I wanted yeah. to say before, like I don't, I don't, I don't have one of these at home mm. yet, um, but I've got the earlier generation, mm. which you're familiar with, yeah. and then when I bought a new rug, I bought, I bought an apartment and I bought a new rug and I thought I'd start fresh, new rug, new couch, everything within the space of itself. But I kept getting, like the machine kept howling at me and telling me there's a pollution event. And it was like in a severe status and it was VOC, Voltag and it compounds. But that, my machine wasn't able to differentiate between formaldehyde and a Voltag and a compound. And what I came to learn was, it was the new floors that I put down that had formaldehyde or the, my furniture wasn't that extensive, but um, <laughs> it was practical. Um, but I built it and put it together. But it, it, I just noticed after I set up the living room, the purifier was just howling for a week straight. And I was like, well, how can it still be pollution in the week? And what I found was formaldehyde, it off gases for years, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just detecting that constant stream of formaldehyde. So Is um, the older machine or the current machine able to do anything with formaldehyde or, or not? So what, the, way it, it, the way it will capture formaldehyde is Formaldehyde is 500 times smaller than that 0 0.1 microns, right? Mm -hmm. But what formaldehyde does, it's a crafty pollutant. It will clump onto particle matter, or it'll clump onto other pollutants, sorry, it'll clump onto other pollutants. So then if it attaches itself to particle matter, it will then in turn be captured once it hits that PM filter. So people have been protected from it, but this is, the new system is a better way of breaking it down. Yeah. And even more efficient. Most definitely. It actually destroys rather than capturing, um, yeah, so that's that's and really... that presumably means longer life from your filters too. Yes, to an extent. So yeah. it depends. You know, yes, you're right. It does. Um, but again, if you're exposing a lot more other VACs in the room, then it'll still be putting the filter through its paces. To it, it, it's that. amazing to, that we now understand this. There used to be a TV commercial 15, 20 years ago of this paint from whichever paint company it was, yeah. and the big innovation was that it didn't. You couldn't smell it, yeah. and so they painted it in the morning, and at the end of the day. They had like a, an a antenatal class with women breathing and they were saying, look, it's so good that, you know, you can, that no one's going to get uh, annoyed wow. by this paint smell. Yeah. And of course, you play that ad today, there'd be marches down the street or something. hundred percent. You know. We know from Mount Hyde's an odorless gas. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Do you have any information on scented candles? And if, you know, I'm just thinking, are we untuning? Come with me over to this section again. Let's experience. Come follow me. Let's do it. Okay. I mean, it's like burning incense and then asking if your filter's going to filter yeah. it. It's like oh, it's going to filter oh, it. I thought that was a candle. Sorry, yeah, yeah. a candle. <laughs> I thought that mug was a candle, didn't it? Sort of looked like a candle. It did. Um, my bad. But in saying that, if we've moved into this space, right, to answer your question, there, a lot of candles do actually have volatile organic compounds in them, but they're not kind of the sustainably sourced and ethically created candles. They're, they're, they're not... A lot of the um, naturally made candles that don't have VOCs won't actually trigger the machine. Okay. So if I put this next to the machine, where the sensors are, that candle doesn't have any toxins inside it, right? So it's made out of natural materials. Um, it doesn't have any chemicals inside it. So you can still use candles but if the With purifier sense. detects it, um, then it's probably not, it probably has a fair few chemicals inside it that's combusting back into the room. So it's okay to use candles and things, but natural sources and not, um, how do I it, it actually helps you to, to, using, <laughs> to choose better candles because you'll find out the candle that they told you was well, or any was safe and wasn't so safe. You saw in that video with the cleaning mm. products, right? Like mm. I switched over to non-toxic products because mm. every time I would use a, mm. a, a, a wipe to clean my table, the purifier would just spike. <laughs> so yeah, guys, please feel free to come and experience, play around with the machines. Like this is your time to play around. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers yeah. your question. Amazing. Any other questions?
I was just gonna just gonna reemphasize as well, just with embargoes. So that, I guess that applies to any stories, but as well kind of social content. So midday Sydney time on twenty second of March. So yeah, thank you for um, keeping everything under wraps and of course until then. Yeah. So so you will have um, end of May for the t for the consumer yeah. machines, um, and then it will actually be end of April twenty eighth, is it? Yeah. For yeah. the professional. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Correct. Just in time for winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. My son has that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, okay. He's one of the 2.7 million. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any any questions, um, obviously George will be here. Thank you, George, for doing such an excellent job of um, bringing it all together. Um, and obviously press materials will be on the way shortly. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I really am so excited about this technology. It is incredible. Um, so yeah, I hope you feel the same way. <laughs> Thank you.